Hello lovelies and welcome back to Squeaky's Cauldron or welcome if this is your first time here. I'm your host Sarah Evergreen. Thank you for coming. Today we are going into the first key of the nine keys of Hecate. So this series was started with an overview video last week. Please go check that out if you haven't already. This episode is going to be diving into the first key and the first gate as I like to think of it. So the gate of loneliness and the key of connection and how those two things work together to support you in your life and in your magic practice. Remember, all of the keys in this series are interconnected. They work together. So there are some themes that are going to come up in this episode that are going to also play on other keys in the series. So I highly recommend check out the whole series once it's out and come back, revisit these videos as you feel called to explore and expound upon what's touched on in each episode. Before we dive into the first key, I want to open up this space for us with a prayer to Hecate. This is the prayer that all of this series is based on. I invite you to join me, but if this is not your thing, no problem. Just skip ahead a couple of minutes and we will see you on the other side. If you are joining me, thank you. I want to invite you to get present in your body in this moment. Allow your breathing to deepen. Sense where your body makes contact with the surface beneath you. And just allow yourself to relax a little bit. If you are driving or doing something else that requires your attention, please keep your eyes open. However, if you are able to and feel comfortable, please close your eyes or soften your gaze. Hail Hecate, Queen of Witches, our journey is a blessed one. Each key you grant us unlocks great power. Grateful we are for all your keys. The key of connection, which reminds us we are not alone. The key of solitude, in which we may come home to ourselves. The key of acceptance, for that which we cannot change. The key of courage, to face and overcome adversity. The key of desire, which brings us closer to you. The key of vision, so that we might move freely. The key of honesty, which brings us peace. The key of curiosity, so that we may live lives of truth and joy. And the key of devotion. Kate, I live my life in service to you. Guide me. Make me ready. Illuminate my next right steps. Help me to see more clearly and align more fully with my highest purpose and my highest self so that I might better serve you, serve myself, and serve those around me. Aho. <sighs> Here we go, gate one, the gate of loneliness and the key of connection. Hecate is a goddess who lives on the edges of society and many of her followers, if not all of them, or people that are attracted to her energy, feel this sense of being on the edges as well. Maybe we feel like an outcast, a black sheep in the family. Maybe we are engaged in some way of living that just doesn't make sense to the people around us, whether that's in a small town and we don't fit in, or we're in a big city and we're just meant to be somewhere else. There's this feeling of disconnection that often comes along with that role, feeling smaller and unable to really find the people that we resonate with. This can be very lonely. This can be a very lonely place to be, the place of the outcast, the place of the black sheep. And so when I call upon the key of connection to unlock the gate of loneliness, it is from this place that I call, this place of <sighs> consistently feeling like there's something else that I'm just not getting that everybody else seems to get. This has lessened over my years as I have connected with more people and connected more with myself and connected with Hikate, but it is still a thing that arises over and over and over again. And that's the thing with these keys and these gates is that we will need to pass through them over and over and over again. The keys come to us so that we can utilize them, 
so that we can continue along the path. And the path is just dotted with these gates consistently, but we have the keys to open them. The key of connection builds this. Hecate acted as an ally for those on the outside of society, for those on the edges. And so too with the key of connection, she helps us to find our own allies within the social networks that we have, within the support systems that we have, or to build a support system when we're coming from what feels like nothing. But I can guarantee you right now, you are not starting with nothing. You are here watching this video. And so at the absolute bare minimum, you have this. You have me. You have my voice in your ears or coming through your computer. And that's something. Hecate also acted as confidant and connection for Persephone when Persephone was in the underworld. And if you feel like you are in the underworld right now, know that you can call upon Hecate for that self-same purpose, for guidance, for reassurance, for the feeling of being seen and heard, because that is inevitably what connection is. It's building this feeling of being seen and heard. And initially that has to come from within. We have to see and hear ourselves first and foremost, because we cannot then recognize how others are seeing and hearing us if we haven't done the work ourselves. So establishing that connection to yourself, listening to your intuition, looking in the mirror and saying, I see you, I trust you, you are here and you are beautiful and you are worthy. This can go a long way. With this key, I'm talking more specifically about our social connections. And these social connections happen at so many different levels and in so many different intensities. They go from very surface interactions with the clerk at the grocery store or someone you pass while you're having a walk, all the way down to those soul deep connections that you might share with your best friends or your most intimate partners. And we need all of those different levels. I imagine there's probably a large amount of people in my audience who say, no, I hate the, the small talk and the chit chat and, and this level of interaction. I only need the soul deep ones. Those are the only ones that can sustain me. And I recognize that. I feel that so much in myself so much of the time. However, there is a certain amount of bandwidth that we have for those connections. and. Those connections can be fairly rare or extremely rare in most cases. And when we only have those connections, when those are the only connections that we allow to have an impact on us, then we miss out on a huge world of connection that we could draw from, that we can draw energy from, that we can draw love from. So I urge you to open up a little bit to the possibility of allowing what seems like a more surface, banal, boring conversation to infuse you with a little bit of joy as you infuse the conversation with a little bit of joy or the connection with a little bit of joy because it does go both ways. And for some of us, just a few of these little connections will be fine. And for some of us, we need a lot more of those kinds of connections and fewer of the soul deep connections. But I do firmly believe that everyone needs some of every single level. Working with the key of connection will allow you to lean into that more and more. To know that this is something that you're aiming at and that Hecate is supporting you in will allow you to be more open to all of these different kinds of connection and to feel them and really feel supported by them. Now, a few things to remember when you are working with this key, because this key, all of the keys really, but this key definitely can be a difficult one, especially for people who have lived so much of their lives. Let me rephrase that, especially when you have lived so much of your life feeling on the outside, especially when I have lived so much of my life feeling on the outside. Leaning into this key has been a motherfucker and it's been incredibly rewarding because while I'm still building this, 
I do have an actual support network that I can draw on when I'm in crisis. Even when one of those legs falls, as has happened recently, I have other people that I can then lean on so that my stool or my chair or whatever image you want to use for it is just not, does not, mm. so that the stool I'm sitting on, the support network I have doesn't just fall apart because I had one person and one person only and then that person is now gone. So that's what a network is. That's what the web of support is that we're looking for within this key of connection. When you start, especially if you're not used to it, it's going to feel awkward and that is okay because you're not alone. You're working with Hikate. She is there for you. And discomfort is not going to kill you. You are resilient, you are strong, and you are able to move through discomfort into something bigger and more beautiful because that always comes. Discomfort always comes before a change, before growth, before birth. And know too that just because you're uncomfortable doesn't mean you're necessarily unsafe. Of course, if you are feeling actually unsafe, trust your gut, trust your intuition, get out of a situation if it's not feeling right, but discomfort does not equal unsafety. You can check out my video on red flags for narcissistic behavior for a group of behaviors that you definitely do want to avoid, but know that we can sustain being uncomfortable and we need to in order to build our resilience in order to get bigger in order to get stronger take it slow when you're starting to work with this key allow yourself to move into the stretch zone and not all the way into the panic zone and two i want to say like there's nothing wrong with you if you're feeling lonely there's nothing wrong with you if it's difficult for you to make friends. This is a story that I told myself for so long and it stopped me from reaching out. It stopped me from, from doing the things that could help actually navigate the issue that I was dealing with because I felt so ashamed that I didn't already have this network of people, that I wasn't already <sighs> deep friends with someone. I didn't already have someone that I could tell my hurts and my hopes to. Not just someone, but someone's people. I didn't have the network. I grew up in a family that was not supportive and I had to build that on my own. But in order to get to that building, there was a lot of de-shaming that I had to do. And if this is where you're at, I, I just really want to drive it home. There's nothing wrong with you, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. You are worthy of having love and support and friendship in your life. If you are enjoying these episodes, please remember to like, comment, subscribe. If you're on YouTube, hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss anything from Squeaky's Cauldron. I do love hearing from you guys so much. Your comments are amazing and I am just overjoyed to know that y'all are out there watching and listening to these episodes and to these words coming out of my mouth. So thank you so much. For each of these keys, I'm going to offer you a practice that you can start utilizing today to start moving into this space. So for this one, I recommend you check out the meditation that comes out along with this do that first so that you can kind of get into the space of being connected to the key of connection already and then start this practice. So each of us have a web of connection that's already in place, but a lot of these filaments might be disused. They might be somewhat broken. They might be dim. And this practice is going to help you start building those connections again. Start building those lines between yourself and other people once more. First, I want you to make a list of 10 to 20 people that you know. People maybe you haven't talked to in a while. People that you do talk to relatively frequently. 
I want you to focus on people who feel good and fairly uncomplicated in your life. So tackling these more gnarly kind of relationships, that's not what you want to do when you're starting out. What you want to do is to start really building and leaning into the support network that can allow you to show up as you are without having to navigate too much trauma or triggers unnecessarily. Those things are going to come up because they come up when we interact with other human beings, which is a beautiful thing. It gives us an opportunity to work through them. It gives us an opportunity to see them, first of all. But you don't want to go headfirst into the fire, so to speak. So we're, we're just kindling a little bit of warmth, a little bit of something cozy, as cozy as possible. So make the list of people and then really... I don't want to say easy, simple, straightforward. Every day, pick a name on the list and send a message. Say, hi, I was thinking about you. I'd love to reconnect. Maybe set up a time when you can go out and have a cup of coffee or take a walk or have a Zoom call or maybe you just want to play video games online with this person. These are all great ways to connect with people. And what you're doing is restarting the foundation. And if you already have people that are within your support network, allow yourself to become a little bit more open to them. Is there something that you've been needing to say that you haven't said? Or is there something, some vulnerability, some, some space in you that wants to be seen and heard, wants to be witnessed by another human being? Allow that to come out a little bit. Allow yourself to be a little bit more honest, a little bit more present, a little bit more here. And continue this practice until you've gone through the entire list and then build from there. Don't send out one message and then just let the rest of any messages kind of fall apart. Allow yourself to continue the conversations. If you want to go a little bit deeper into this key or any of the keys or working with Hakate or other deities, bringing magic into your life in a really holistic, integrated way, please check out the link in the description for my one-on-one -on -one coaching offers and schedule a discovery call today. I would love to hear from you. I also want to give you a spell that you can use. So leaning more on the magic side to bring it into your daily life. If you haven't already, check out the five reasons your spells aren't working and ways to fix them. One of the things I talk about is how important it is to do the work in the mundane, in the physical world that supports your magic and vice versa. These two things work in conjunction with each other. One without the other means that one has less juice. And we want our, our lives to be juicy and beautiful and full. So the spell for the key of connection. You will need a green or pink candle, preferably something small. I like to use birthday candles because they burn out fairly quickly. So I feel like I can sit with them until they burn out. Or you can use a tea light. Or if you want to use something bigger, you can do this spell over a period of, say, three days and just return to the candle until it's all the way done. You'll also want a piece of paper and something to draw with, like a Sharpie or a colored pencil or something bold that's gonna make an impact on the papers. First, like with all spells, you'll want to cleanse and open your space. If you are not familiar with this practice, you can check out episode 20 of Squeaky's Cauldron. There's four episodes that I put out that kind of go through the basics of a ritual. Also, the next episode in the Basic Witch Collection is going to be about methods of cleansing, so you can check that out as well. Once you've cleansed the space and opened your circle, if that's in your practice, I want you to invoke Hikate, whether through using the prayer that I started at the beginning of this episode, which I will include in the show notes, or in whatever language feels right to you. Because these are Hikate's keys, you want her there with you to add that level of support. Now, in the middle of your paper, I want you to write down either your name or a sigil that you've created to represent who you are. 
right now in this moment. From there, begin to draw dots representing each person that you know. Your family members, your coworkers, your friends, the guy at the post office, your favorite barista. Just allow these dots to proliferate throughout the paper and don't hold anything back. This is not about the relationships with the people themselves. This is about the fact that you know them, that you have a connection to them. And when it starts to get too crowded, take your pen or your Sharpie and draw a line from your name to one of the dots and from your name to one of the dots, from your sigil to one of the dots, from your initials to one of the dots, over and over until it starts to get a little too crowded with the lines going from you to these dots. And from there, take your pen and connect one of the dots to another dot, and one of the dots to another dot, and so on and so forth, until you've got this kind of kaleidoscope of dots connected to lines, all of them connecting back to you. And you can see how you, at the epicenter of all of these people, have these connections. How you not only are connected to these people, but these people are connected to each other through you. And we're not alone. You are not alone in this world. You have these connections, these tendrils, these little bits of energy that goes out and comes back in. And not all of these relationships might be good ones. Not all of these relationships might be ones that you want to invest any amount of time in. But some of them, some of them are beautiful in and of themselves. And all of them have a way of being able to remind us that this individual, this mind, this way of seeing the world is not all that there is. Is not a, a soul boat floating on the ocean. Because even the boat in the ocean, the sea life that's beneath it is abundant. We are interconnected with each other and with the world around us. So sit with that image, sit with that feeling as you look at this picture that you've drawn of your connections. And then take your candle, and if you can, carve your sigil or your initials into the candle, and imbue your energy into it. And then place that candle in the middle of the paper, preferably on something fireproof, because I don't want you to set your house on fire, that would be ideal. And then light your candle. And as you sit there and watch the candle burn, feel those connections. Feel them in your body. Feel how you are not separate. Because we all have on some level the knowing, the innate knowing that we are connected to everything around us. So find that in yourself, tap into that and allow that to grow and allow that to just suffuse your entire body. And know that the spell that you are doing is reminding you of that in this moment and in the moments to follow, in the days and weeks to follow. And it is also as you, as the candle, as this light in the middle, you are drawing more in towards you. We are attracted to your light. We need your light. So let that shine through this spell and through your words and deeds and actions to come out of this spell. Allow that to glow. Allow yourself to glow so that we might find you. And you can sit with this energy, with this feeling as the candle burns down, or you can raise more energy by chanting an affirmation or an intention, by vocalizing in some way, whether or not it comes out as, you know, words. <laughs> you can just make noises in order to bring that energy up. You can dance. You can do drumming, even if it's just on your body. You can make that percussive sound. 
anything that feels right in the moment to bring more energy up and into this spell. Or like I said, just chill. Just chill and be with it. And when the candle is all the way burnt out or you're ready to move on and maybe blow out the candle and repeat it in the following days, go ahead and do whatever you need to do with the candle. Thank Hecate and then close your space in a way that feels right for you in your practice. And I want you to carry this paper with you. This paper is now infused with the energy of the spell that you've done, with your realization or acknowledgement of the connections that you have. So fold that paper up, stick it in your wallet, stick it in your Kindle case, stick it in the bottom of your shoe, whatever works for you. But keep it near you as you move out into the world. And allow that energy to inform the conversations and the interactions that you have with people as you're going through your day. So remember, do check out the meditation for invoking the key of connection. And until next time, my lovelies, take care of yourselves and as always, use your voice.